Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm the Barbecue Bit Engineer, and this is the Smoker Builder Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about why I personally think that dial thermometers are a waste of money, no matter whose they are, where they came from, where they were made, where it's located, does not matter. Dial thermometers suck, and here's why. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. So yeah, I got a little bit emotional there in this entry, a little opening deal here. But, uh, you know, here's the catch. So I, I have been building pits since 2007. But my real career from the time I was 19 years old, circa August 26, 1994, has been in the refrigeration food equipment trade. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I was paid to do for a living by my boss at the time and up until the end of where I sold my business by customers was to make temperature happen, give accurate readings, right? And uh, reliability with the piece of equipment we were working on. So that was everything from steam to gas heated stuff to uh, air conditioning refrigeration, food equipment of all kinds, you name it, I've worked on it. Um, I've un- I've cleaned it, fixed it, you know, made it go for 28 years, basically, as of this video. And uh, so in my professional, absolute, made a money doing it, living for a living uh, opinion, dial thermometers are the most unreliable and biggest piece of crap on a barbecue pit in the world. There you go. I said it. You have my permission to take them off your pit now. Anyway, let's get technical about why I say that. I hope hope you're laughing right now because I'm being a little bit extreme with my statement, but it is actually something I do have an opinion on. So getting technical about it. So dial thermometers, the way that they're constructed, okay? There's this thing called a bimetal spring is what it is. And no matter what thermometer it is, if it's so there's liquid dial there's there's they're filled with like glycol or glycerin and stuff there's uh long stem thermometers there's little bit short stem thermometers there's calibratable thermometers there's the ones that were made by teltru there's the ones that are made by china you know it doesn't matter they all if it's got a dial on it it uses a bimetal spring in it and that bimetal spring is constructed of two dissimilar alloys my mind doesn't really know what they're made out of. I just know it's two dissimilar metals. And so what happens is, is it's a spring and it's coiled up and it's treated a certain way inside that dial, inside that stem of that thermometer. And what happens is, is as heat touches the end of that probe, we're talking about the last three eighths of an inch of that probe. As heat comes in contact with that probe from whatever the source is, the, do- the two dissimilar metals move in opposite directions. And the the amount of movement in the two pieces of bimetal causes a spring to turn inside that face and the head of that thermometer. Now, it can say accuracy of plus or minus, whatever. I don't care. It still doesn't matter. That's the only place it's checking temperature is at the end of that stem, Right. And if that stem is not in the place where it matters to you, what you're cooking, it's not doing you any favors. It's a reference point. At, it's a reference number at that point. So you can, those dials, let's just say this, any thermometer that you get is calibrated to that accuracy number in the middle of the range. In other words, if it says uh, plus or minus you know, 0.1%, accuracy that just simply means that at the middle of the range which if it's a 50 to 550 300 degrees that thermometer is accurate at 300 degrees when you get down on the dial or go up on the dial it loses accuracy on that range now here's the catch some of the good ones come with a calibration screw okay so when you move that screw you are tampering with that accuracy number and you're moving it somewhere else on the dial you're not making it more accurate on the range of the dial. You're making it more accurate in a different place on the dial. Hope that makes sense. 
So, so now that I've crushed your dreams and told you, matter of fact, I'll tell you a story real quick before I move on, because it just came to me. Um, on uh, back in the day, now now with refrigeration, like we're checking things like superheat on a refrigerator or a suction line on a refrigeration system, and what that means is, is that we're trying to make sure that the refrigerant that's inside that refrigerant line is in a complete vapor state. In other words, there's no liquid left. Or we're going to check subcooling on the liquid line on the high side of the system. And we have to know that there is 100% liquid there. And so we have two readings that we're going to do. One's pressure, one's temperature. And then we've also got to do some math that and reference a chart that some smart guy in a laboratory made. And that has to be absolutely exact. I mean, for that system to be working properly. So we would use a digital thermometer out of our tool bag, right? Then we would go get the digital thermometer that the customer has. Then we will get another, all of them read a different number, right? So if digital thermometers suffer like that, imagine what a dial thermometer does. You can't even use it in that application. So the other story I was going to tell you is that I was working on uh, early in the day. You'll look, you'll see some old pictures on my forum or different social media of thermometers that I had private labeled with my logo on them from Teltry. And I spent a lot of money on these thermometers back in the day, or at least what I perceived was a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, I got my logo put on there. It was a good thermometer. The gotcha there was, is I didn't want to spend the money on the calibratable one. I wanted to spend a certain amount of money to get my logo, and that was what was important to me. These thermometers came, and I'll be dead gum if every single thermometer was a 25 degrees off of what my digital said. And I was like, okay, well, this isn't right. Like, these things are all junk. I'll have to send them back. Before I sent them back, I got on the phone with uh, with their engineering team, trying to work through, like, how do they calibrate these things? How can they tell me these things are accurate? Well, what they do is they have three different oil baths that they check the probe in. And they'll take that thermometer, they'll dunk it in vat number one, then they'll dunk it in vat number two and take a reading. Then they'll dunk it for a little while in vat number three. And then they take that range right there, and that's how they know if the dial indicator is within so many percent of whatever that digital readout is in that oil bath, that tells them that this thermometer is calibrated properly. Well, here's the difference. This is what I discovered. Those guys are checking in an oil bath, right? That's not practical to what we're doing. We're checking in an airstream. And by the way, that airstream is highly turbulated. It's moving around inside that pit all different directions. This probe might be four inches away from a brisket that's 70 degrees. This probe might be at the very top of the cook chamber, which is running who knows what, 400 degrees if it's cooking from the top down. Um, you know, so you got that, the end three eighths of an inch of that dial probe is subjected to whatever the temperature is in that exact space. So the best you can do with a thermometer is just ignore the number and look at the needle and see what your result is. That's really what we're doing. We're just kind of guessing at that point. If needles up, you'll hear me say. So if the needles up, then I know that I'm cooking at the right temperature I want to be at. But that doesn't tell me what the temperature is on my cooking grate. If you're really trying to drive the needle home, and get accurate readings across that cook chamber, you're not gonna get it with a dial thermometer. So what do you do instead? Okay, so I've literally thought about doing this for about the last three years, four years maybe, is just not putting dial thermometers on anything. Just only get like these Inkbird, for instance. Um, all the different digital probes I've had over the years, um, I've, I've basically chose the one that was in the middle of the range you know instead of spending a ton of money on some fluke which is a brand of thermometer that's really amazing or whatever instead of spending all that money on a fluke uh super highly calibrated perfect thermometer or buying some cheap maverick thing that's you know you can get anywhere uh for 30 bucks instead of doing that i chose to go in the middle of the road and uh i chose inkbird so now I've got consistency because I've got the Inkbird whatever thermometer with four probes, right? 
And then what you do is you put those probes at cooking grate level. Now we just have to accept that the readout on that thermometer is in fact whatever it is that it says it is. So now we have a baseline that we could work with. Truth be told that 275 in that spot on the cooking grate could be five or six degrees off compared to the, you know, what it is in reality. But this isn't a laboratory, this is just barbecue. And who cares? So what we'll do then is we'll just accept that as reality. The temperature in that on across my cooker is now 275. I can see it four spots on this ink burnt thermometer. And I think you'll get more consistent results doing it that way. Um, honestly, it really doesn't matter where you place the probe. I just recommend it's either somewhere at great level is what I recommend. And then try to keep it away from uh, your food. Like if you just put briskets on and they're 75 degrees or whatever room temperature is, you just put briskets on the pit or Lord help you if they're 40 degrees, they can have an adverse reading on that thermometer probe. Same deal goes here with uh, digital probes. They're a thermal couple too, but they're uh, they're Vister usually is what it is, or a, a K-type probe or uh, something like that. So RTD is another kind of a probe. They're all different resistance readings based on uh, you know whatever the electrical output is on the on the probe. So or microamp or whatever it is. So what happens is is that you could be off just a little bit across that scale. But as long as you keep it away from the food, you'll be okay. Now you've got an even reference. So I've thought about doing that. The other thing I thought about doing was just not putting thermometers across the cook chamber. Just put one right in the smokestack collector or right in the smokestack. I've seen a couple of guys do that on, like one guy does it on drum smokers. Some other guys do that on their pits. And, uh, you know, it seems that it seems to be okay. We're just looking for an even reference. But spending all that money on a dial thermometer, in my opinion, is a complete waste of money. Just get something in there that gives you a good point of reference. Uh, my preference is an Inkbird digital thermometer. I am not sponsored by them. I do not sell them. I simply just think they're the best option for now until someone else comes out with a better option. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful and not confusing. If you got any comments on this, let me know what you think down in the whatever platform you're on there. Um, by the way, if you're looking to get your next smoker, whether you want to build it yourself or have me build it for you, you can get your start at smokerbuilder.com. If you hop on over there to smokerbuilder.com, it's going to ask you one simple question. How do you want to get your new smoker? All you got to do is choose one of the three options. Build it yourself, have me build it for you, or help me decide. And uh, once you answer that question, I'll be in contact right away and we can get the game started. So uh, anyway, till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. This is Frank Cox, the Barbecue Pit Engineer, signing off. See ya.